Hello, I'm Brittany from Selena's Pines and welcome to my reading vlog. Look. I was watching reading vlogs this morning and I was like, I love reading vlogs. I want to do one myself. And the two reading vlogs that I've done in the past, they didn't get like a lot of views, but I think reading vlogs are really fun and I enjoy them, so I want to do them. What the heck. Today I am reading The Year of the Flood by Margaret Atwood and I'm on page 252 at the time that I'm recording this. Uh, today is Monday, August 17th, about... Oh, it's 4 p.m. <laughs> it's 4 p.m. And uh, I've been reading mostly this afternoon. Uh, this morning I didn't do much reading. I was on my phone for a while doing social media stuff. So I've been reading the past couple hours. I really want to get to page 330 by the end of the day. Uh, there are 429 pages total, so... Uh, hoping to get this done tomorrow, I think. I really like this so far. It is about a... I guess it would be considered speculative fiction. And it's kind of a dystopian society, although I wouldn't consider it a dystopian novel because it uh, is focused primarily on this group of people called the Gardeners and specifically two women within that group. One of them is Ren, one of them is Toby, and it kind of goes back and forth between their perspectives throughout the book. So the gardeners are this group of people and they're very peculiar because they're sort of like Buddhist Christians or I don't know if Christian is the right word. They uh, follow the Bible as like, you know, they believe in God and Jesus and they use like scriptures and stuff. But they're very environmentally conscious, so they kind of like blend like Buddhism, Christianity, and like nature all together to create this like secret society. Um, you so funny. The secret society. They kind of reject what their larger society is doing, and so you know they try to use like all recycled stuff. You know they don't do anything that uses too much energy or power. They're vegetarians. It's very interesting because at the same time I really vibe with like their intent and how they're like community based and they accept anybody who wants to be a part of their group. Um, it's also kind of interesting because they call it, they refer to it as a cult in the book, but like so far the gardeners doesn't, it doesn't seem like a malicious cult yet, so I don't know if there's anything going on behind the scenes that I'm going to discover, but uh, so far it's like, I really do like the gardeners. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to like them, but I really like like, that sounds like a cool community to be a part of. I, Ren is a young woman and she has kind of grown up with the gardeners living in their society. And then the other woman is named Toby and she sort of fi finds her way into the group accidentally, but she's more of an adult and she ends up spending like maybe 15 years uh, with the gardeners. But then there's a flood and it's a waterless flood and we haven't really... Um, at this point in the book, they haven't really specifically discussed this flood, but um, it is a waterless flood, so I think it's a pandemic, and I had no idea I would I was going into this reading like a pandemic type book, but I'm very excited to find out where it goes. Um, I want to learn more about the gardeners and like what's going on. Yeah, so really interesting book so far. I d had no idea what it was about when I started reading it. I've read The Handmaid's Tale in high school and also in, in a college class I took, um, and then I read Margaret Atwood's Writers on Writing earlier this year, so I kind of picked this up just trusting Margaret Atwood's writing and that I would like it. I will be writing a book review about this at the end of the month. This was my Slanted Spines August pick. I'm drinking some tangerine tea and I wish I could share with you how wonderful this smells because it is just so lovely if you like tangerines. If you don't like tangerines, you might gag at this, but <laughs> let me show you karma right before I sign off. What a ham, am I right? <laughs> Hello, today is Tuesday, August 18th, and it is about 1.30 p.m. So this morning I finished The Year of the Flood by Margaret Atwood. 
I read a lot yesterday afternoon and evening and I stayed up a little bit late to read it before bed and then I got up this morning and I had to finish it. This is one of those books that I really don't know how I feel about it right off the bat. Um, I've kind of been thinking about it for the past couple hours just trying to process my thoughts. I am doing a written book review for this at the end of the month so I have some time to collect my thoughts before I have to post that. I really like the premise, like the plot of the book was very fascinating, the world, I loved the group of the gardeners and I thought that they were just like a neat community but I don't know how I feel about like the character development and I'm still pondering it but it's like the characters felt a little bit flat to me. I did like the characters though, like I was interested in them and they did have personalities, but I just like felt just a part of them that wasn't like filled in, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But I also like having only read The Handmaid's Tale and this, I do get the sense that Margaret Atwood almost likes having her female characters suffer at the hands of men and I don't know if like that's sort of somewhat of a point she's trying to make that like men are sort of like sexually aggressive and they harm women and they do like serious damage to them or if I guess I don't know how I feel about it. I'm going to explore these topics in my book review. It's a part of the story and I know it's fiction but but yeah, I liked it. Like, I was interested in the book. I I wanted to keep reading. At no point was I like, oh, this is incredibly boring. So I was engaged the whole time, and it was an interesting world. I loved learning about it, but yeah, I'm still trying to piece together, like, what I think Margaret Atwood was intending with the story, and whether or not I feel like she achieved that, as well as reflecting on my own experience as a reader, and so yeah. Um, I have no idea what I'm reading next, time to decide, but I don't think I'll be able to read anything for the rest of today because I'm still really thinking about this book and I don't want to chase it away quite yet. I want to sit on it, ponder it, and just like let the story and the writing and the characters sort of like just fly around in my head for a little bit. Uh, let me show you my TBR stack just so you can see the choice that I have to make. There can only be one. So somehow I have to choose one of these to read next. I have a feeling it will be either this one or this one or this one or this one. <laughs> we'll see. Just come an angel of the morning, baby. You're my whole heart, Juliet. Hello beautiful people, how are you today? Today is Wednesday, August 19th. It is about 4 p.m. right now and I'm drinking some cranberry tea out of my writer mug. And the tea is writer tea because it is Poe Me A Cup Raven blend. Yeah, I don't know, my mom got this for me a while ago and it's pretty good tea. I like it and I thought you might enjoy the packaging. I'm also wearing my favorite tie-dye shirt. It's a little bit cooler today, so I'm able to wear this without sweating profusely. I always just feel in a good mood when I put this shirt on, so um, my morning was kind of meh, so I needed the little pick-me-up tie-dye to uh, cheer me up. Yeah, so I didn't do any reading last night or this morning. I actually, right before I started recording this, I read the first chapter in such a fun age. I think yesterday when I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna read next, like in my heart of hearts I knew that I would be picking this up next because I've been so excited to read this for at least a month now. So far it's about Amira and she is a babysitter and a woman who she works for asks her to take the little girl to the grocery store to kind of buy some time. It's late at night, uh, the mother just wanted the little girl out of the house and the this random woman at the grocery store kind of t tells on Amira to the security guard and is like, I don't think that this is her baby, like, uh, I think she's she might be kidnapped or something. There's a little confrontation and um, things get a little bit heated for a little bit, but then 
ultimately Amira walks away and the little girl goes home with her father but that all happens in the first chapter and the rest of the book I think is sort of like gonna be the consequences of this event but I really don't know what to expect so I guess I don't really have much of a reading update. <laughs> um, oh wait, no, I forgot. I have very exciting news. So I was at 95 subscribers and all I had to do was ask book Twitter and I am officially at 100 subscribers right now. Actually, I think I'm at 103 subscribers, but thank you to all you beautiful people who are subscribed to my channel because this is a really cool milestone for me to hit 100 subscribers um, and you know, I don't know, I'm just happy. Finally got into three digits, so that's very exciting news for me. I've never really been the kind of person to have a huge following on any social media, so I'm hitting a lot of milestones this month and I'm very excited. I hit 500 followers on Instagram, which is crazy. Uh, I'm definitely getting there. The community around my uh, Slanted Spines shenanigans, so uh, it's exciting to have more people on board, to connect with new people, new readers, new writers, and just uh, get us all talking online. I value my online interactions with fellow readers and writers so much because I do so little socializing in real life that anytime I get a comment on my video or anytime that somebody like responds to my tweet, it is very exciting for me and yeah, it means a lot to me. So. Yeah, it's kind of incredible how much this day turned around because like I said, this morning was kind of lame for me. I was like experiencing a lot of like self-doubt and just kind of at a low, um, but everything kind of turned around. I did some journaling, yoga, took a shower, put the shirt on, and uh, it's turning out to be a really beautiful day. I hope it's a beautiful day for you as well. Juliet is now staring sadly out the window because I had to close it while I was recording this. So yes, um, I'm hoping to read the first 50 pages of this book today. I'm on page I'm on page 20 right now, so I think that'll be pretty easy for me. Um, if I read to page 50, I might just keep going and see how far I get, but I don't really know what I'm doing today. I also was writing my book review earlier for The Henna Artist. I read that back in June and I loved it, so um, I was like, yeah, I want to write about it this week and uh, just kind of try to get more people to read it because it was just such a great book and I loved it. So, cheers and happy Wednesday. Bye! Hello! Today is Thursday, August 20th, and it is about 2.30 p.m. And... I'm on page 232. <laughs> um, I am flying through this book. I know I'm gonna finish it today. There's pretty much no question about that. Like, like this is this is how much I have left right here. Yeah, I'm gonna finish this today. Okay, so in my last vlog snippet, I kind of described what happened in the first chapter of this book. I've noticed that most people are sort of using that incident to sort of frame the whole book's plot. But, like, it's an important event for sure. It definitely spurs a couple things that uh, are, like, essential to the plot. But it's less so about, like, the grocery store incident and more just about Amira and Alex. And so Amira is the 25-year-old babysitter. She doesn't really know what she wants to do in life. She doesn't have any, like, super obvious passion for anything. And then Alex is, she's like 33 I think, and she's a mother of two. She's a very privileged woman and she sort of gets whatever she wants. She's used to having money. After the event at the grocery store, uh, Alex kind of becomes obsessed with Amira and she just like, um, is like hyper fixated on her, on Amira liking Alex. And Amira's kind of like, eh, about Alex, you know, she's like, you're my boss, you know, kind of keeps her at an arm's length, but Alex just really wants Amira to like her because Alex just like craves validation. She craves validation. She just wants people to like her. I'm having a lot of reactions to this book as I read like every couple chapters, I'm like, she did not just do that, like, you just crossed a line, like, you should not have done that. You're not respecting boundaries at all. Like, that's not cool, man. So yeah, I really like Amira. I can relate to her a lot. Definitely makes you reflect on a lot of things. It's about people trying really hard 
in our current world. It takes place in 2015. There's Uber, <laughs> uh, the internet, very modern, but um, I'm excited to uh, find out how it ends. The crap is really about to hit the fan uh, where I'm at right now, and I think Alex may have just crossed the worst line out of all the lines she's crossed, and uh, is kind of flying off the handle right now, and I just want to know how it shakes out. I will let you guys know what I think about it uh, in my next vlog. And surprisingly, I'm not drinking any tea in this segment, just water, so. <laughs> I've already had two cups of tea today, so. Hello, today is Friday, August 21st, and I finished Such a Fun Age. First of all, you might be able to tell, last night I gave myself a little trim on my hair. Ever since uh, we started doing quarantine, I've been trimming my own hair because I haven't been to the salon, and uh, I don't know, I think I did a pretty good job. You can probably tell that I do the bare minimum for my hair, so <laughs> um, I'm kind of content with a subpar haircut if it means I don't have to leave the house. I finished reading Such a Fun Age a couple hours after I finished recording my last vlog segment, so I really enjoyed this book. It was really entertaining, uh, I liked the story, the characters were interesting, Amira was likable, and then like Amira's friends were likable, but um, most of the main protagonists are people you kind of like give the side eye. The writing was probably its weakest quality. Uh, this is Kylie Reed's debut novel, so it was just kind of like choppy in some parts. Like it didn't have like a really good flow all the time. Um, there were sometimes I would read a sentence and I I didn't understand like what the sentence referred to. By no means did that like ruin the book at all for me. Like I got used to it. And there were a lot of times when the writing was really good. And uh, Reed makes a lot of really interesting observations about like people's mannerisms, the way they speak. They're very lifelike and like a really accurate reflection of the time we live in. I think this would be a really great book for a book club. I know that it was one of Reese's book club picks uh, because there's just a lot to unpack with it, you know? It makes you really reflect on the time we live in and sort of like the age that people like me are at. Like, I think this will speak to millennials more than it might to people of an older generation just because, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like older people might not like get it all the way. Uh, I was reading Goodreads reviews and uh, this one woman was like, what 25 year old doesn't know what she wants to do? Like, how can she complain about wanting a real job and then send out no applications? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, don't come for me. <laughs> the first chapter does come back and plays a big factor. So it's not like the first chapter isn't important, it's just, it's not what I would use to describe the book. You know what I mean? Amira is like really chill and just kind of like cool and laid back. And um, I think that sometimes that can come off as like her being underdeveloped, uh, but she does like stand up for herself. I just like, I liked how calm she was. She was just, for the most part, she was pretty, pretty mellow and I liked that. Well, she did a good job. Like I don't have kids, but I felt like she did a good job characterizing the chaos uh, that having multiple kids at a function or a social gathering is like. Uh, there's a Thanksgiving scene in this book and I'm like, there's just like a lot going on. I'm like, yeah, that's definitely how it is when you're at uh, family gatherings with like a bunch of kids running around. Like in the middle of an adult's conversation, they'll stop and be like, don't put that in your mouth. And then they'll like come back to the conversation. So I felt like she did a good job characterizing children in this book. Juliet is inspecting my bookshelf. Are you playing with- she's playing with my skeleton hand. Oh, she wants it to pet her head. If you want a pet, come here. Oh my god, she's using- <laughs> But yeah, super quick read for me. Enjoyed it a lot. Very interesting. Would love to have discussions about what this made other people think of as well. So after I finished Such a Fun Age, I didn't know what I wanted to read next. So last night on Instagram, I put on my story asking the question if I should read this or that next. And the last time I checked, I think this was at 55% and this was at 45%. So it's been a really close poll this whole time. Um, but I think I'm leaning towards this one. Uh, it's not that I'm not gonna read this one, just not next. I'm really excited to read this James Baldwin book. So, this is what I'm going into the weekend reading, and 
Uh, not sure if I'm gonna do a reading vlog for next week yet or not, but I really enjoyed it this week and it's been a lot of fun hanging out with you guys and comment with a rainbow emoji if you made it to the end of the video in honor of my rainbow tie-dye shirt. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Bye! See ya!